Leadership today isn't what it used to be. And a lot of our approaches to leadership in today's business world are based on a lot of outdated ways of thinking about leadership and leadership stereotypes that have been around for decades. So in today's video, I'm going to go over seven of the top leadership stereotypes that are out there today and why they are wrong. And if you are subscribing to these leadership stereotypes, they can be hurting your career. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Jacob. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and futurist. I've written several books on leadership, employee experience, and the future of work, and I've worked with thousands of leaders over the years. And this channel is devoted to helping make you a better leader. If you enjoy content like this, please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I will notify you whenever new videos are created just like this every single week. So let's get right into what these leadership stereotypes are and why they are actually wrong and why they're hurting your career. So the seven leadership stereotypes that I want to go over today. Number one, a leader should never apologize. Number two, a leader should not show any kind of emotion. Number three, a leader should always be strong and confident. Number four, a leader always needs to have the right answers. Number five, a leader needs to take charge. Number six, a leader needs to be the smartest person in the room and last but not least, number seven, a leader should never be questioned. Hey, really quick, 96% of the people who watch this video just like you are not subscribed to the channel. Can you please do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel? It'll take you one second, it helps me grow the channel, and you'll get access to more videos just like this one. Make sure to subscribe, and now let's get back to the content. I'm sure you can think of lots of other leadership stereotypes that are out there, in fact, I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment in this video. Let me know what is your favorite leadership stereotype out there besides these seven that I've identified. So let's go through each one of these in a little bit more detail and go over why these are actually damaging to leadership. So the first one, a leader should never apologize. What is wrong with that? Believe it or not, I've interviewed and I've worked with a lot of leaders and CEOs who early on in their careers were actually told by their leaders at the time that they should never apologize for any mistakes that they made. This is the Jack Welsh era of leadership. This is what we actually taught leaders and executives in our MBA programs. This is what was accepted inside of organizations around the world. Now, of course, today it doesn't make as much sense, but we've carried that stereotype with us into today's world. So why is this such a bad thing? Um, number one is it erodes trust inside of your organization. If you never apologize, it kills trust. People will not trust you because you're not able to admit to mistakes, right? If you have a friend or a family member who screws up every now and then and they never apologize, how are you going to view that person? You're not really going to trust them going forward, are you? That person might also get this reputation of being arrogant because as we know, nobody is perfect. So if you pretend that you're perfect, you're gonna create a negative perception of you as a person and as a leader. Number two, this kills psychological safety. This kills any kind of openness. If you never apologize, your employees are not gonna feel safe coming to you with problems, with ideas, with solutions, and trust is gonna go way, way down. And number three, this also limits your ability to grow as a leader because inherently what you're saying is I'm perfect, I never make mistakes. And if I never make mistakes and I'm perfect, that means there's nowhere for me to grow. I've already reached my pinnacle of leadership success. I'm at the top, I can't get any better. And you're gonna find that what that's gonna do to you is the world around you will change while you will stay stagnant. And one day you're gonna wake up, you're gonna realize that your approach to leadership no longer makes any sense. So leaders should never apologize is one of those stereotypes that we gotta get rid of ASAP. Uh, the next stereotype, a leader should not show emotion. Now, I come from a family from the former USSR, the Republic of Georgia is where my parents are from. Uh, my mom is really big on showing emotion and vulnerability. My dad is the exact opposite. So for most of my life, I could say that I actually agreed with this. I didn't believe in showing emotion. I didn't believe in being vulnerable up until a couple years ago when I had a panic attack. That's a whole separate story, but that completely changed my view and perspective on showing emotion. So why is this such a bad thing for leaders today? Number one, it sets unrealistic expectations. We are human beings. Human beings have emotion. If you don't show your emotion, those around you will not feel comfortable sharing their emotion. And what that means is that you're gonna create a corporate culture and you're gonna create an organization 
where everybody's a robot. Now we already have a lot of technology going inside of our organizations. We don't need to be working with robots, at least not yet. This also hurts your ability to communicate effectively. It reduces the levels of empathy inside the company where we're no longer able to take other people's perspectives, uh, see things from other people's points of view, not just even employees, but customers as well. And again, that leads to a host of other problems there as well. Um, and lastly, this creates a very tense uh, environment, right? As I mentioned, people want to work for other people, not for robots. So if you don't believe that a leader should ever show emotion, chances are you're not going to create a very pleasant team or corporate culture environment. The next leadership stereotype is a leader should always be strong and confident. Now, a leader should be strong and confident, but it doesn't mean that you always need to have that aura of strength and confidence, right? There's a difference. I'm not saying that you should never be strong and confident, but the flip side of that is you don't need to pretend to be strong and confident all of the time, 24 seven. It's just simply not sustainable. It puts a lot of pressure on you as a leader. And quite frankly, eventually you will crumble the armor will crack and it's not going to lead to a very positive outcome for you or for your team. Uh, this also ignores the value of vulnerability. So as I talk about in my recent book, Leading with Vulnerability, there's a lot that happens when you are vulnerable, when you lead with vulnerability, learning and growth and development and trust and collaboration. There's a lot of really great things that happen when that guard comes down, when you are able to lead with vulnerability. And if you're always trying to project strength and confidence, that leading with vulnerability oftentimes gets lost and you lose out on a lot of those benefits uh, that I just talked about. And lastly, this also hurts the ability for other people to speak up and to share their opinions and feedback and input. Because if you always have that aura of strength and confidence as a leader, it can be very intimidating for those around you. So sometimes it's okay to let that guard down, let other people speak up, let other people be strong and confident, let them share their voices as well. So again, uh, a leader always needs to be strong and confident, not a good leadership stereotype to have inside of your organization. The next leadership stereotype that I want to go over is a leader always needs to have the right answers. Um, now, again, this is not possible, right? It's just not possible for 24 uh, to have this kind of mentality 24-7. Um, and eventually what it does is it leads to leaders just making things up. Because if you don't have the right answer, you're going to pretend that you have the right answer. Nobody around you will question you and you're going to like tell yourself that that's the right answer. There's actually a scene in, uh, in Seinfeld where George Costanza, they're trying to take a lie detector test and George Costanza is giving Jerry some advice. And George says, remember, it's not a lie if you believe it's true. All right, well, I got to go take this test. I can't believe I'm doing this. Jerry, just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. So that ends up happening to leaders. You start to make things up and you believe the lie. You believe in the made up answer that you're giving yourself and you make decisions based on that and people follow those decisions and it ends up crumbling. So you don't always need to have the right answers. In fact, it's far more effective to let other people speak up and share those right answers for you because they're closer on the ground floor, they're working with customers, with products, et cetera. Um, lastly, you also remove any kind of agency and accountability. What you do is you make yourself the bottleneck. And so anytime there's a problem or a challenge that comes up, instead of people using their own heads to try to come up with solutions, they're gonna turn to you and say, yeah, the leader, give me the right answer. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. And that ends up causing a host of other problems in terms of speed, in terms of stress for you and for your team. And it's just not sustainable. Instead, empower your team to find the right answers, to come up with ideas, to test solutions. It's just like that analogy of you don't want to catch the fish for your team. It's far more effective if you teach your team how to catch fish. They can feed themselves instead of always having to turn to you. So you don't always need to have all the right answers. Again, that creates a very negative environment. Employees start to become lazy and you become the bottleneck. The next leadership stereotype is a leader always needs to take charge. Again, there are situations when as a leader, you do need to take charge, but is that always? Is that 24 seven? Do you always need to be the one saying, we're gonna do it my way, let's go forward? Absolutely not. That is a very old school way of thinking. That ends up leading to a lot of micromanagement. 
that ends up leading to a lot of stress and overwhelm for your people. You suffocate them. They feel like they can't breathe and you become a boa constrictor of a leader, not effective for anybody who's involved with that. Um, it also reduces autonomy, right? Employees don't feel like they can work on their own. They feel like they always need to come to you for things. And also a great leader knows when they need to take charge. And a great leader also knows when to let other people on the team take charge because there are times and situations where you have to give up control, where you know somebody else is more talented or more capable, or they have more insights than you do, and they should be leading the way even though you are the leader of the team or the company. So do you always need to take charge? No, sometimes yes. Next leadership stereotype, a leader always needs to be the smartest person in the room. This is something that a lot of leaders feel very uncomfortable with. And the more CEOs and leaders that I've worked with and interviewed, the more I see that what makes these leaders and CEOs more successful time and time again is they say that they hire other people and they surround themselves by people who are smarter, who are more talented and who are more capable than they are. And this puts you out of your comfort zone because we assume that as a leader, you're the best. That's why you're in that role. And oftentimes we want to hire people who are less talented and less capable than we are so that we can preserve our status. But that ends up hurting you because you don't get challenged, you don't get pushed, everybody just ends up agreeing with you, you get a bunch of yes men and yes women and everything just kind of stagnates. What's far more effective is to surround yourself by people who are better than you. They will challenge you, they will question you, they will push the team forward. Remember that a leader's job isn't to be the smartest person in the room. It's to unlock the potential of those around them. It's to unlock your potential, unlock the potential of the team. You can't do that if you're constantly making sure that you are the smartest person in the room. So don't be scared to hire people who are better than you. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, this creates, I think, a very um, healthy level of competition. But if you assume that you are the smartest person in the room, it creates unhealthy competition. Employees will hoard information. Uh, employees are going to backstab each other. You're going to lead to an Enron type of situation, right? So it's not a very good environment to create. It creates a very type uh, of a toxic culture. So you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. Sometimes that might happen, but ideally, more often than not, it's other people who are going to be smarter and more talented and more capable who are going to be giving you the insight so that you can make the best decision. The last leadership stereotype that I want to go over is a leader should never be questioned. This is another tough one for leaders, right? Because when a leader makes a decision or shares something, if you get pushback and if you get challenged or questioned, it's very tempting for a leader to say, how dare you question me? Do you know who I am? Do you know the leadership role that I'm in? Do you know how hard I had to work to get here? How dare you question me? That's not a very good environment to create. And I think we all know the reason why. Instead, it is far more effective to have an environment where you can be questioned, you can be challenged, um, you can be pushed. Otherwise, you create a culture of fear. Now, I'm not opposed to all fear. I think a little bit of fear is okay, but too much fear creates that kind of a toxic culture. And if you create that vibe, that culture where you can never be questioned or challenged, that is very much fear-based. It's not good for anybody. And I think it's going to hurt your customers. It's going to hurt your employees, missed opportunities, and a lot of bad things are going to happen from that. It's also going to keep you from making the best decisions. Um, because if you can never be questioned or challenged, there are going to be a lot of great ideas, a lot of uh, valuable insights on your team that people might have that they will not share because they don't feel safe to do so and they don't feel like you are going to take those ideas and do anything with them or maybe that you'll even punish them for it. Uh, so again, missed opportunities overall, not a great thing. So these are some of the seven uh, most common leadership stereotypes. How do you break leadership stereotypes? I'm gonna give you four quick steps for how to do that with the acronym LEAD, L-E-A-D. L stands for lead by example. You wanna break a leadership stereotype? you start by breaking that leadership stereotype yourself. Number two, empower others to challenge those stereotypes. So if somebody else sees a better way of doing something, a different way of doing something, they see a stereotype that they're trying to break, let them break it. Uh, a um, is for adapt. So change, right? Make the changes. Uh, after you empower your team and they're making those changes, adapt, embrace those new things. And lastly, develop. The way that you break leadership stereotypes is you teach 
people how to lead. Most people become leaders at some point in their mid to late 20s, maybe early 20s, but they don't get leadership training until their mid to late 30s, early 40s. So there's a period often of 10, 15, sometimes 20 years where people are put into leadership positions, but they were never taught how to actually lead. And so what do you do is you look around you and you cobble together. You see stereotypes that are out there. You see what other people are doing and that becomes how you lead. So if those stereotypes exist, they, uh, they become like, uh, like glue, right? They find the, the new leader who hasn't been trained and they, they latch onto that person like a, like a bad virus. So teach people how to lead inside of your organization. Teach them what those stereotypes are and how to break them. You cannot lead in the future if you are leading with ideas that are based on the past. So those are some of the seven common leadership stereotypes and how they can actually be hurtful to you. Leave a comment below. Let me know what other leadership stereotypes uh, you think are very common that should be broken. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this delivered to you every single week designed to make you a better leader. Thanks for watching.